your hand, your Let's straight into it because I'm not sure how much battery this thing's got. Um, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Yeah No Good Chat. Uh, today we've got a bit of a different episode. We've got some new fellas in the studio. Uh, Trent Cousins has made a return. He's back for another episode. Uh, our guests today are Curtis Sankey and I won't use your official title, but Mitch Hemmings as well. So they're going to come on and talk to us today about a little bit about uh, a few different things. So you have both been. When did you get inducted into the uh, army? Um, January. January, so, and January, you were yeah, same, same yeah, time. Yeah. So you guys are the same time, but you're yeah. three years apart in age, two years apart. Oh, you're 20. Uh, I'm twenty. I'm twenty-one. Two years yeah, apart. Yeah, right. Yeah. So we'll just go through like the little differences in what you guys do because you both are special, specialised in different things. Yeah. I assume. So, Mitch, uh, I'll get you to start us off. So, what was your like your process into? getting into the army did like because a lot of people struggle because I couldn't get in because of my knee reconstruction but like was it easy for you or? oh because they're, they're massive like because we didn't do like all your medical um, stuff yeah. so I looked all through your medical records like if you had a broken arm when you were sick so I can tear and get the shit out of you yeah really like, I, I just like asked your head to do that like why'd you do it and head you oh fuck it? Oh. Yeah, questions like yeah, that yeah like, <laughs> like um remember fucking Sam tried it Sam tried it you in um, Navy yeah, one yeah. time he fucking held acne on his back Oh, you got fucking, yeah. I think he got rejected. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. Um, just forget they're like infected when he's at sea. Infected, yeah. yeah. Oh, true, yeah. But, and like, like dimples on your fucking, like, in your skin. Like, I knew a bloke here. I'm like a dimple on here. You know, fucking, like, question him and shit. Really? Like yeah. So, like, ha- like we, we refer to it as, like, hail damage on chicks. Like, yeah. cellulite and shit like that. Like, that's yeah. Like, I'm not sure about the chicks, but, yeah, I, was, I think it's with the blokes are, like, pretty similar. Fuck, like, what does yeah. that, like, lead to, or is that just... Um, oh, they just, like, question. But normally, just most of that stuff, they can just explain it pretty easily. If yeah. you can't, like, prove anything, they're like, oh. I don't know if you're suitable for this job or not. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like right. for you? So guys? yeah, medical was um, pretty pretty crazy. Uh, so when I when I first signed up, um, so obviously um, Mitchell was going through the soldier stream, um, going through the officer stream. So yeah, definitely get two different perspectives um, on things. But when I was going through, um, I initially applied pilot. Um, yeah. So with that, um, I eventually got to the end of a pilot medical, and that that shit's that shit's pretty intense. Um, so. With pilot medical, obviously, you know they're they're some of the best of the best, and yeah. um, they're operating some pretty expensive stuff. Um, and do you go into that like knowing you want to fly helicopters <coughs> or jets or shit? Like um, so or you, you, you get on a like a cadet ship sort of thing. Um, so essentially, they sort of uh, you know know who's going to be pilots yeah. for each year, and then you can sort of tack on at different points in your oh, career, yeah. and you can test out for pilot and then leave whatever you're doing and then go over. But so it's a pretty specialised sort of stream. But yeah. anyway, back to the medical thing. Um, yeah, with pilots, they do a whole different, um, you know, a whole different ball game of, of tests. They'll measure, you know, your length from your your feet to your knee, your knee to your buttock, your buttock yeah. to your like your your um, your shoulders. Um, just so you know, you can sit in a cockpit and they know when you eject or whatever, you're not going to rip your legs off. So, right. so you can um, be like pretty much too tall to be a pilot. Hundred yeah. percent, and yeah. Um, yeah. and you can like there's guys that have been, you know, a weird length between their knee and their and their buttock and they're instantly they're cut, out. they just don't. So when, when Mitch was talking about, um, uh, you know, getting medically like class and stuff like that, so uh, even if you get the green light, you might be already medically back class, you might be um, like, a, like a, um, a, a clearance that lets you only be somewhat deployable or, yeah, or something yeah. like that. So yeah, it's, um, it's a big thing. And yeah, like you're saying, acne, like I know plenty of blokes that, yeah, it's acne is a big thing and just different things that, uh, a lot of people would sort of take for granted and you know it can knock a lot of people back and yeah it's and, um, a, I remember like yeah because when I was going through they um they brought up my knee reconstruction but I was actually going through like my ankle fucking reconstruction yeah, time. so I was like and my, obviously a knee reconstruction nowadays is like two screws and they fucking do your fucking ACL back up yep. and I had it when I was 12 and I applied for the army when I was 17 and I was like yeah no I'm going through this stuff and like literally I had two plates, eleven screws bolted into my fucking ankle and they're like, No, no, we got no issue with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's just yeah. near <laughs> like your medical obviously you rock up to like everything's different like, Oh yeah, right. Yeah. It's, yeah, just, it's, yeah, it's um just if you get someone yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone good and um look after you and can um you know no, knows the, the yeah. right things. Um, yeah. yeah, I think you're, you're pretty well sorted, but at some times they also gotta go by the book of the yeah. thing. Well I've got my assessment you because when you um on your last Set of like, what do you call it? Like, open up a part of the process. You go through like your assessment day, which is like interview, yeah, the final yeah. um, med check, and the hearing test, eye test, and shit. Yeah. And I got fucking rejected the first time. 
because the first thing you do is you call um, perception or colour blindness test. Oh, yeah. I failed yeah. the first one, then maybe go back. Did through. you know you were colour blind? I had no fucking idea, right? Really? Yeah, I've heard that, like, that's through. come up a couple of times, yeah. eh? But, um, and then I had to do this other one. Because like, the first one's all those, like, it's like indigenous art, like, you got to try to pick a number out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like two that. different colours, one yeah. colour's a number. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, the second one was, like, these two lights on the screen, just trying to, like, still order that. Yeah, I couldn't do that. And then they made me, like, rearrange the shades with pink. I put five like, past that one, but then I said, oh, no. And, like, I, can't, I couldn't do any, I can't do any single trays. So, so what do you do for that? Like, you can't rectify a colour blindness. You can't rectify, so no. they, just, they just cut your job list. Yeah, like, they generally just cut your job oh, list. Oh, right. Back in the day, they'd probably just say no altogether. Yeah, because I'm... Yeah, like I've got all. You have like a big like um, job list of jobs that you um, yeah, yeah. that you have um, opened up, and yeah. you just pick out of that. And once I got done for the colour thing, like all half that sheet just disappeared. Like all the trays were probably like pilot and all that would have gone. Yeah, some te- like um, data rolls would have gone. And, yeah. So. so what did you like first go for? I went to I was trying to go to navy for um as a marine technician like, as a sparky. Oh, okay. On yeah. the ships. I was anyway as a submariner too, which is that's pretty fucking. You gotta do like more training for that. Like, yeah. You gotta do actual like psych, um, psych tests and stuff. It's pretty intense because like you're a submerged boat like, for like 60 to 3 months. So. Fuck. 60. Yeah. yeah. Fuck that. Well, I'll get into like what both of you, because both of you do fucking substantially different shit just talking yeah. about these before yeah. the podcast at the pub. But um, obviously, the, the culture is the same, like the brotherhood and shit like that. And a lot of blokes. A lot of people probably in general think that it's just fucking strict as fuck, 24-7, you know, like you're getting screamed at all the time to be here, do that. If your shirts aren't pressed right, yeah, if your fence's not made, not tight enough, you know. So like, but obviously like you do create these crazy fucking bonds with the blokes that you are around and like so, just differently like, because I know both of you's. Oh, well, I don't know you so much, Mitch, but I know that fucking Curse loves to get off this. But I've seen <laughs> pictures of you naked <laughs> on the piss. So, like, what can you tell us about, like, what, like, obviously you spend 80% hardcore fucking doing army shit and then you yeah. spend 20% downtime. And That's your right. downtime is, you fucking down. Yeah, I've read the brotherhood thing, like, because literally just from day one, you're, like, stuck with the same person. Yeah. Or same group of people, like, for training like, for three months. You, you're in the same, like, living with them, having chairs with them. Yeah. I'm eating with them, so you're stuck with them Fuck. for that, and then all through the rest of your training and your career, you just like you you, you create bonds because like you, you, if you're with the same person for that long, you got yeah. to find it's like force bonds. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like in a good way though. So like, yeah, yeah. But, like you'd hate to have a shit coming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, man, like, if you got to work with them like twenty four seven, you, yeah. you want to make some good ground. So yeah, like, it's, it'd be like, like that shit, too. Yeah, that's what that, yeah. Like even if you meet them initially, and you're like, "Fuck, you're a drop kick kind." You like you, you would have to find a way to overcome so your differences and be like, right, are we in this shit? It's just built up in your field and like, you must go and brace the shit really well. Yeah. You okay, so Yeah, uh, pretty you, much. You, I know you're a lot more outfield, I feel like. Uh, um, yeah, different 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 pieces. So like hundred percent um everything that sort of Mitch was saying before is is exactly the same. Um, you know, on the on the other side of uh, of things. Um we we spend a fair bit so that, that eighteen month Continuum um, at um, at RMC, it's it's pretty intense, yeah. and um, we don't so much uh, know where we're going at the end of it. We put in our preferences of yeah. like what you know specialisations we want to go into, going like transport, like Mitch or, or other things like that. But um, yeah, we we sort of go through that whole time just back to basics, yeah, and then yeah. we work our way up. But it it is really um, really intense, um, and you're talking about creating that bonds. Um, with your mates and you you think you have good mates when you go through school and you'll keep those yeah. mates but this is it's it's, it's next, next level, level shit, shit yeah. uh, and you know those people become your brothers and, and your sisters and you know I've got <coughs> you know brothers from all over the world now essentially because we have at where we are we have international students come in so we've got guys from Malaysia yeah, fuck. Iraq do they send them over here just Papua to train New Guinea, and shit, Yeah, hundred percent Fiji, mm. Vanuatu, mm. all over the place. Do they give um, you you that chance to like go overseas? Um, yeah, go for for Australians, yeah. there's I'm I'm not too not too sure on them, but they definitely go mm. over to New Zealand. Yeah, they do like, 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 it's like an internship. Yeah, it's kind of like a transfer. Much. So they bring yeah. 
like a lateral sort like of. One of the pommies, I'll bring one of ours over there, over oh, here. Like, we'll take one of ours over there. And, oh, and that's like a, maybe a two year posting. Maybe fuck, yeah, that's a crazy so, opportunity. Like one of my, one of my sick, best yeah. mates, she's, uh, she's a Kiwi, um, mm. and we're in the same sort of um, company together and stuff, and we did all our initial training together. Yeah. And, you know, it took about, um, you know, how important bonds are and stuff, and just being mates with all the other guys that are there, but she's come over the ditch, you know, you can't go home for 18 yeah, months. No. She's just left everything behind. She was in the army over there before, but she's come over and just the bonds you make with these people that you think, you know, and she's years and years older than me, but just just the absolute just mateship and just, you know, you would just give anything if they're doing it tough or they don't have enough food or, you know, you they're... wouldn't even or, think about Or they haven't had enough sleep. You, you would, without a doubt, you'd say, right, I'm going to do your, you know, your picket or whatever yeah. and you're up an extra two hours than everyone else, but you do it because, you know, they're having a hard time and you talk about mateship and stuff and that's where it's that's where it's sort of it's born and, yeah. and just doing the absolute shittest stuff you could think of. Yeah, because it's like, cause when you go through army, it's like an experience that you'll never have anywhere else. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's a completely different world. So also good having them bonds there because you both can relate to what you've done. As yeah. A, as a group, That'd suppose. be the biggest so. thing would be like the actual cohesion of like we understand each other's struggles. Yeah. I feel like today, like even a lot of best friends don't even know what each other are going through, yeah. whereas you yeah. guys have been doing literally yeah, like like the exact same shit. Hub talk to series about like what we're doing, like how we're feeling because like, they don't understand it. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. That we do. Yeah. You'd be yeah. better off talking to someone who's actually done it. Yeah. And it's crazy. Know. Like it, it'll get developed. Like you know, me and Mitch are at very early days in our career, but like you know, we've we've seen a, a, enough for the moment, and then you know, from growing, and you, you by the time you are uh, fifteen years, ten years in the army. Um, you just understand it just on a so much different level as well. Yeah. So we're only talking from, you know, and, and I don't like to say, you know, we know it all because we certainly don't. And we know about this much and there's so much more of um, just understanding that whole culture about yeah. mateship and looking after your mates that, that is still yet to come. Um, and, you know, that's what I look forward to of making so many more relationships and, and mates across, not just within the training establishment where we are now, but just across wider army the overseas board, yeah. that you know i could be on deployment overseas and i see one of the guys that i went to rmc with yeah and, and that's just that's just crazy it's like second like, nature yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like a bond that you can just like go up to yeah. Yeah. and you can just body zero off yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so um you guys obviously like I'll, I'll just touch quickly on so mitch you are transport cargo yeah i'm a cargo so it's like a turtle turtle operator so yeah yeah i'm operating like heavy forklifts cranes um, your cow masters are like your container cranes. Yeah, like, yeah, so, yeah, fuck. Um, so we like control rail, wharfs, um, and your, all your transit areas outfield. So we yeah. can't come in and out, so that's our role. So are you looking at doing something with like loading trucks and shit like that, like within, yeah. like in the service? Um, yeah. So if you were to get like fucking um, station somewhere, you'd just be like the truck driver? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably not say the truck, because we'd load the truck, we like handle that. Oh, stuff okay, yeah, yeah. So like heavier. Oh, so like you kind of like the actual cargo, yeah, the the actual logistics. Yeah, line. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like you, you know. Yeah. And then Curtis, you are. Yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm 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 a little bit more generic at, at this stage, but I haven't actually specialised in what I do. So obviously it's the soldier army, stream, yeah. the officer stream. Yeah. So when when Mitch joined, he you know he would have picked the role and ticked it off and gone, yeah, I'm doing that. And as soon as he goes through all his training, he's doing that the whole time. Yeah. His officers are a bit different. Um, Obviously, we're employed for that whole leadership perspective on things and, and for that actual role and that they've seen potential in us and that we want to actually pursue that. Um, so with officer, it's essentially you go through, you say you want to be an army officer uh, and Navy and Air Force do things differently, but army, you, you're pretty much saying, yeah, I want to be an army officer. And you start from all the way from, from you know day one to graduation, um, as a generic officer, you train to lead soldiers yeah. in that basic sort of like infantry sense. Yeah. Um, but then from there, um, in your final couple of months, you put in preferences of actually where you want to go. And so mm-hmm. RMC is a constant like, you know, uh, assessment uh, on you as a person of how well you can do stuff, how well you've absorbed your training. Yeah. And when you come out, you'll have like an order of merit. It's like, you know, high school, like your ducks and you'll have all the way down to, you know, your OP25 and then yeah. other guys, you know, below that, that 
when they come out, if I say, yep, I want to go into tanks or I want to go into transport, I want to go into, you know, infantry or whatever, I put in my preference and, and that sort of moves on from there. So um, in, in, the, I'm in my final six months now, so coming up in the next couple of months, I'll be ticking some boxes saying, yeah, yeah I want to go yeah, transport or I want to go, go, yeah, tanks or whatever. So, yeah, yeah it's very, very different in that sense because... Yeah, both our jobs are very different, mm. but so sure, you know, I'll, I'll come out and I'll I'll be commissioned and I'll have to make sure you know these guys are gonna are gonna live and these guys yeah. are doing you know doing the right thing and that they're um and essentially these guys are really qualified operators and the officers generally are you know um, a jack of all trades and a, a master of none you know like yeah, yeah, yeah. and the masters are, are these guys are the tech specialists and officers mm. are just just people people. Um, controllers I suppose and just make sure they understand what the commander wants and then they push it to these guys and, and they just make it happen yeah. and you yeah. monitor it so that that's um, yeah. you've told me a couple of your like crazy fucking outfield stories of training and shit like that and it literally sounds like you're training to be the SAS <laughs> like some of the shit you've told me. I was probably, like, it's probably over a couple of beers. So it's like a bad. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, like, yeah, they were like Vietnamese people jumping yeah. at shit. <laughs> like, uh. so, but like, obviously, it sounds like a bad camping trip, but that's what you guys do to become the best of the best. Yeah, so like, camping what, what's probably yeah. your most like hardcore stint of a, like, a, of a training outfit or some shit? Yeah, so obviously, I've still got, um, you know, a little couple of months uh, to go, but. What I've done so far is definitely something that anyone who's gone through RMC and they'll um, you know, uh, agree with me on this, but one of the things that is always pointing in, in officers' minds when they go through training is, is an exercise called Exercise Shaggy Ridge, and it's a um, it's a food and sleep deprivation exercise that they push us over you know, a certain amount of days and yeah. hours and whatever. And just during that time, um, you're, you're at a constant state of um, fatigue, uh, and you know you're obviously sleep deprived yeah, or food yeah. deprived so with all those combination of things you really draw on your mates to to get you through but there, there were some times that a lot of guys not so much me but uh, people get to the point where they're hallucinating and like a lot of people only maybe experience that through you know other other means of um you know the drugs and or whatever things like, like that but this is dead set <laughs> this is the hu- human mind just uh, playing tricks on itself yeah. uh, just through that, that food and sleep deprivation that gets that I only hallucinated once and it was just backpacks turning into big fucking crazy clown things and yeah it was, it was, uh, <laughs> it was pretty <laughs> crazy but, but honestly there are some guys that really struggle with it and they, they saw people you know they were seeing dead people and stuff just walking across roads all the time and yeah it's, so it's you know experiences may vary so just to like thing. make it easier yeah. for our like listeners so yeah for example, how much would you eat or sleep in these, like, what was the measurement? Yeah, so it? just some, like, stats for, like, uh, this specific uh, one. So for um, sleep-wise, so uh, we had about, experiences may vary, but they generally stick to the same. So it's about five to six hours uh, out of about 105. So they were done in about two-hour blocks. Mm. You'd be walking you're walking through the bush, you'd be on some certain thing. They said, okay... Get your sleeping bags out. You got two minutes. Go to sleep. And yeah, so just, straight up. Just you be, yeah, you're carrying a weapon, and you're just like, "Fuck!" And you, you, the instructors like they don't talk to you. They're just like acting like a radio the whole time. That you know, um, uh, balaclavas are up or whatever, and they're just they're just back, just observing, watching, constantly marking you on two how minutes. you're doing stuff, and then. It's just like, so that's like boots off in there. And if you don't do that, fuck it, we'll keep walking. So it's just like dudes will just instantly just throw shit off, you know, we'll, don't give a fuck. And then, you know, packs will be down, ripping it out. And you'll be you're like, it's like middle of the day. Like, how am I supposed to sleep? Like yeah, yeah. Is that when you haven't slept for like that long <laughs> time, you've been the most retarded shit. And literally, <laughs> we woke up. We woke up this one, um, this one time, and um, yeah, I was thinking, oh fuck. And and also just a point. So with time, they take your watches off you, so you don't know what fucking time it is. You don't know how long you've been going. You don't know what time of the day it is. No yeah, day you could, or night. you'd roughly so, change, yeah. like you know, check it from the yeah. fucking sun and stuff. But yeah. but you know, when you have a watch on, you rely a lot on that. Um, of yeah, Fuck. judging how long you've been doing it, and that sort of acts as a motivator. But when you don't have that, you think you've been doing something for like two hours, and it's been like twenty minutes or something. Yeah. So it messes with your head. But back to that, we've had two hours sleep or whatever. I didn't know we've had two hours sleep. It's roughly about that. But we get woken up. Our instructor just grabbing one of our weapons and just 
straight out of the spray the yeah just, just no, no but so so it, it essentially if like fires blank rounds and oh, stuff like oh, that so the weapon no no so no, 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 so, <laughs> yeah, so you're obviously doing training you know with, with um for, for the moment you know we're just it's all blank but yeah all just blank yeah, rounds yeah. so but it's just sort of wake up you know it's not aimed at anyone or anything it's just like a wake up sort scare of the yeah, yeah, scare the, yeah scare the shit out of you a bit but um yeah so we're waking up and they're like righto you know get on the road you got two minutes bang so boots are on you're throwing shit packing away you back and you're off off again and you know that person who's got that lead or whatever they're taking off and finishing their mission or whatever they've got to get to this objective so that's that's probably one of the hardest things like that food and sleep deprivation and that the whole you know the um just just all that stuff combined just creates one big mess that a lot of not not a lot of people have dealt with in their life yeah. and yeah. you'll constantly push yourself through and and Mitch have done the same thing constantly push yourself through and tell like this is this is fucked like you think oh, i can't do this but you just get that mental resilience about you, and just that bit of, I don't know, bit of bit of grit about you, yeah. and and you just push through. And so the next time, and that's what they do it because the next time you come around to that, you think it's not, it's not it's like not that hard as this. Like, yeah, you've done it before, so yeah. Or it might be a little bit harder than like, like, oh well, I've kind of done something similar. So then you just yeah. build, and then you just get to this absolute fucking. So is it kind of like the make or break? Definitely. Like, oh, I know yeah. I've seen like in movies. Yeah. That, oh, that's the worst example you can say. But like ringing the bell and shit like that. Like, do they have it's, like um, an um, Yeah. So it, like it, not so much a bell, but like it's definitely like you can go up and strike and say, "I've had enough." Uh, there was there was one in particular fella um, that he just straight up just left the army through the middle of that exercise because he wasn't like it wasn't so much so so up up until about like where i am now um Ah, there's pretty much like a requirement and there's certain thing boxes you've got to tick but you can sort of pull out but then you know return of service and things kicks in so you you know sign that dotted line and you must be here um, unless it's like medical reasons or whatever that's like abandonment or some shit or um you got yeah, I, I'm not sure on the on the actual specifics of it, but um, but yeah. Anyway, this one in particular, it just just wasn't for him, and I think just a couple of things just culminated, and you know, but he, he got through a whole like nine months of, of stuff, and he's gotten to that end, so he's had a decent crack at it, but it just I just obviously just all hit him at once and just. He's nah, I'm out. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. I can't talk, so, Mitch, yeah. was yours anything like that? Oh, mine was no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no hectic worries, I can tell you. Like, really? Yeah, well, like you guys do PT but, every morning, but don't you? Yeah, so it's all like pretty much like a similar kind of like um, setup. But just it's just not the same. Kind of, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Yeah, yeah. But, um, it's just different. It's just, it's just I suppose just before feels, Mitch goes on, like fits. obviously, yeah, uh, the whole soldier officer stream. But as officers, so, like you get hot, held to a much higher, um, yeah. rec- uh, I suppose, standard because you're going to be the one person in charge one day that you're going to be um, asking these people to just do just the most craziest things. Yeah. And, and you're, so you're going to kind of like say, I've, I've done this before. I know that's right, yeah. What you've been so then, you know, that obviously flows on, that, you know, Mitch may not have done, and, you know, he'll obviously get there one day and, yeah. and it'll happen just in different parts of the training, but um, that that's how it's sort of different, but, just, but just to add context, yeah. Because if they're not doing their job properly, um, they can't expect us to be doing our exactly. job yeah. properly. Yeah, it's, just, it's just like a leadership thing, yeah, I guess. Like, they're doing, if they're like slacking off, and yeah, you guys must slack so. off. And just, so is yeah. your training more like, just like learning how to drive the vehicle? So for the first three shit. months, you do your basic um, so like, so You would have done that as well, because like your basic... Uh, yeah, definitely yeah, basic, yeah. but not so much like on the vehicles. It's oh, just yeah, like yeah, basic yeah. soldiering. So stuff, yeah. the first three months, like it's every, you're basically trained as an infantry soldier. So it, like any anyone um, any dig in the army can get called upon to go. Even, I think, oh, officers even officers, so, yeah, everyone. Yeah, you can get called. You, you you might be doing your job on your deployment, so you might yeah. be going over doing like section attacks or ah, yeah, patrols yeah. as a, as an infantry um, soldier. Yeah. So that's what the first three months is all about, trying to. Um, develop your skills and that, get an understanding, absorb informative yep. information, all your weapons handling, marksmanship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, your radios, all your communication, like learning how to mm-hmm. do, use that language. That's, just, that's another ballpark itself. Trying to do that. So yeah. you just do that, but like you haven't done after those three months. Is yours more just like yeah, a job on, now on, where on, it's like pretty much on the job operation? So you, you go straight into that, do a three month trucky course, how to operate the trucks yeah. Um, yeah. on the road, in convoys, um, in city street. Um, do you do like massive, like long tracks to try to like get yeah, used to it? Yeah, we, d- we do a fair bit of our drive, not too many like big drives. I've been doing a couple of hours stints and then yeah. we'll come back in a, in a convoy though. Um, and you're just constantly talking the whole time. Just yeah, yeah, like, yeah talking, yeah. We use all the lights and shit because like, we, actually some, some of the trucks don't have radios in them. Yeah. So like the, the, um, the lead in the convoy is like falling behind 
um, you like to flick your lights and you turn them on and you flick them a couple of times and that'll tell the fella in front to slow them down. So it's, ah, just, right. it's pretty funky. But. Max was telling me that you fucking, um, you did drive it like in the middle of the night with fucking... Yeah, so we got MBGs on like, cause they yeah. got um, they just got issued the new MBG, so Gen 4 this year. Well, so they are um, night vision goggles, yeah, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And you guys just fucking the drive lights the off, yeah, bl- you got of the night. Yeah, blackouts on. <laughs> Driving through the bush, it was, it was pretty... In the bush? Yeah, like we're filled with this like, stuff. Like dirt, right? right. It's all yeah. like just <clears throat> fucking through the bush. So oh, you're kind of pretty much just through. relying on the front guy to know where he's going. Kind yeah, of so, thing, yeah, so you follow your track and then yeah, MBG, like, listen, you're just like looking at it during the day, like... Really? Yeah, so... So obviously, like, when you look at it in the movies and shit, some kind of lights on green and black. Like yeah. Or they're like these green one, and these black. Ones, yeah. These ones are like, the new ones are blue, so Gen 4, they're like kind of like a bluey kind of, um, it looks like it's like kind of like a full moon kind of thing. Oh, oh fuck. So, yeah. But you just can, yeah, fuck. But they, yeah. they just put them in because like, we got trained initially on the Gen 3, which is like yeah. your old, I think the mate came out in like the 70s and they're just like yeah, green. Yeah, old school. <laughs> and they're just like shit. <laughs> this is the 70s. Like, when you're <laughs> you're saying something like, and you start you get whipping up um, in your spots and there's just nothing out there. So yeah. So what what's the craziest shit you've driven, Jack? And or you haven't driven um, anything so crazy yet? Um, probably the truck, like the HX seventy seven. Are they just your big no, like, army a, trucks? Yeah, that's your a secret. That's a four ton um, um, truck. So um, what license is that? Like HR? That, that's HR. I've got MR. I've got my crane. Oh, I can see six with like a sixty ton crane. Oh yeah, um, I've got that's a, bigger than what I use. Okay, I've got a four ton JCB um, forklift. And next year I'll probably get the 16 ton and the 8 ton. Would you look at going into something like driving an actual like military grade vehicle, like an army tank or a fucking? No, nah, probably. Oh, well, I was hoping that cabs a pretty sick job. Yeah. Um, doing the tanks, I probably like did the dismantled side. So cabs like more your, your light armor, so your as labs and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, more dismantled side. That stuff's pretty. Cool. I've got a few mates doing that. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I mean, this job's pretty like sick. Like, you've got heaps of corals and stuff. Yeah. yeah I've got to travel the world. Like, like we get like attached to the navy. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything, because oh, yeah. all the cargo yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I was about to say, you used to be cash to fucking everywhere. So, so mm-hmm. next year, doing a trip to Hawaii, so I'm going to fucking try to tag along on that. Yeah. Fuck, come. Yeah. Fuck you, you'd be loving life, man. <laughs> <laughs> young person listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> get, get in the army. I'm should pay us for an ad. <laughs> but, um, so, I don't see too much of, obviously, you guys training and stuff like that, because you've got stricter rules with the phones and... I Can't like obviously like, oh, yeah, like every time any of you post anything, but I'm pretty well straight onto it. I've seen a lovely picture of Mitch's cock a couple of times <laughs> on the piss, <laughs> and I know that Curtis Wait, no, loves to fucking nice end up on the piss as well. So, like, is there a drinking culture in the army, or more like a you know like when everyone's loose? Is it you, more like, like a, a treat, like you know, like yeah, you, you know, you know, Monday to Friday, and then like you're off. Yeah, it's Friday. Except it's like three months on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all right. I don't know. Um, cause obviously, you're like, at training, like, we're on the drive for three months. Like, yeah. I think we had one, two days off, halfway through, they let us go on the piss. Like, we just, they all had it. Basically, it was middies. You know, tins, Actually, so. I think I remember you talking to me yeah, that, and I was, was like, oh, because I... How I'm, many middies does it take? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't drank for like three months. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, so it's like, like half it. You're like, yeah, oh, you start, shit. You're, walking, you're walking back up to your um, rooms and you're sitting there, what the fuck happened in my room? You're like, spin, you're spinning, you're like, I didn't know. We went down to PT gear, not what, some post like salute and stuff in PT gear. I was fucking half pissed. Walking back up this hill with my mate, and I started saluting this officer and had a PT gear, had a cap on, I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did you do, do the old ah? Uh, no, I thought you like afternoon sir. It's like just, fuck. Just full centered. Yeah, it was pretty centered. Eh? During um COVID, like I heard a bit more about you during COVID. Like you had to do crazy shit during that. Yeah, so what I was on the COVID um assist team down in Melbourne. So yep. we just like doing door knocks, making sure the people um who were close contacts were staying at home and they're like all right and stuff. Fuck, really? well, we're on the drive for that because it's like a, de- like a deployment kind of um, thing. So yeah, how did the people react to you guys? Were they um, the most people were pretty good. Like a lot of the foreigners, like in the um, commission houses, they were pretty Shit. weren't too fair. Because like some of them come from like um, war, like, um, civil war countries and stuff. Ah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, international. Stuff. They have shit themselves. So yeah, 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 shit now yeah, in, like, in Australia, like, no one's used to the army being like walking around, but over yeah. there, like they're used to the military being there, so they get like, ah, a bit frightened okay. that we're going to try like do something to them. Yeah, but apart from that, there's been a fair few like good nights. So, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, on on my side of the house, uh, yeah. Um, like even with drinking, but just just hanging out with mates. Like, um, you go, uh, 
through that through that whole cycle year, four weeks out for your, like living under a hoochie or, or whatever it is, and you you're just out there and you're just embracing the suck, and it, it it's shit. What's the um, suck? Oh, you just embrace the suck, like the suck of being um, <laughs> fucking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Everything you eat yeah, just sucks. Yeah, yeah, it just sucks. Totally. You just embrace it. Yeah, so yeah, embrace the suck of that. So uh, yeah, take it. Because if you don't embrace it, like, it's a shit time. Like, yeah, just, it's got to take as it comes. Like, just put a yeah. smile on your face. I was about to say, is it like a laugh for, at your pain or? Your pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah you just, just got to accept like whatever <laughs> comes at you. You're just like, oh, yeah. no, this is the best I'm getting for the next, you know, three weeks. Fuck so, yeah. That's what I feel like. People get stuck in the. Like, they just get all depressed about it and they don't think they can do it mm. and you just like, might just suck it up. I, guess it's I was yeah. about to talk yeah. like, yeah. like what, what is your differences in mental health like out there? Yeah. Obviously it's going to fuck with some people not eating for a week straight or eating very minimum for that week straight. Yeah. So like, do you get a lot of people that come in thinking that they can handle it and realise that their mental health buckets aren't as fucking big as they think? Yeah, 100%. And it's not something you can never, uh, you know, you can do your best to try and... Um, set yourself up to 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 win and yeah. to to try and succeed uh in in whatever we're doing um but definitely it's a it's a sort of um character building um yeah. assessment that that's why they go through all this this sort of site testing yeah. and stuff like that and you might pay it off at the start and not give a shit but but they actually do their homework and they know what they're doing because they ask the questions that when you're in and the going gets tough you know you don't get going sort of thing so it's yeah. um they they do that for a reason and they pick the right people so that when you're put in those hardship situations that um they know you're gonna you're gonna succeed yeah. or, or at least set up with the tools um to to go forward and, and you know yeah. continue on in your in your training um but a big thing of that and they'll always ask like yeah look it's gonna be tough it's gonna be shit what's your what's your coping mechanism and a lot of the time they look for is, is mateship and 100% some people just say it as a throwaway sort of thing but it's straight up That's mateship right. and, and the only thing that's gotten me through at different times is, is my mates when you know I can't t- talk to my family when you know yeah. um, when the phones have been stripped and you know uh, a lot of people would never have experienced that before when you, you literally don't have anything and you're, you're stripped of so many different rights that you thought you had as a person yeah. uh, when that gets taken off you and so many other things and um, you, you, you look to your mates and you look to the bloke beside you and you just go right like I'm going to get through this because Jono's with me and you know he's doing a shit time too but I'm going to help him and he's going to help me and we're just going to yeah, go and we're going to get this done and it's all going to be good we're going to be having beers in the pub you know in a week or whatever and then to take your mind off you start making little lists of yeah fuck I'm going to get a big box of fucking KFC or what are we what are you going to order yeah right Jono what are you going to order yeah so you know just to keep your keep your mind yeah and just like well we're going to get this and they'll be making all these plans and then it all goes to shit when you get home because everyone just fucking goes to sleep goes and gets on yeah. a piss and whatever. But, but it's just something to distract you, I suppose. Like, you need it. You you definitely need it. And that's yes. probably what you need when you're there anyway. It's definitely. Just yeah. Just, yeah. Time because, yeah, yeah, 100%. So have you had a different experience with, like, blokes and men, yeah, mental health? Because um, I can imagine, like, you guys yourselves, like, if you don't have a problem and you are mentally health resilient or you are mentally tough, that, like... I couldn't imagine anything more frustrating that when you're trying, like you're already coping well, but like shit's hard, and then like you've got the bloke next to you who you rely on, and then yeah. he's struggling hard, and it's kind of like, well, fuck, man, like so that's like what's taking out. Of your, it's just like it, it probably drags. Like, there's a few people in there like <clears> going through our courses that they just trying to go out and feel like they had to do a big job. They just complain about the whole time. So yeah, just trying to like just wake them up and like make them realise that you know, you're in the army, like just. This is what, it you're, literally doing. Is like, this is what you're doing for yeah. And like we all deal with like negative it's, Oh it's not even like negative people But it's just like people that just like Take all your fucking yeah. pills yeah. So like, like, like you're happy You're positive You're fuck. Even if you're not happy you're, like, you're positive and you know you're working to an end goal And then you got people who just Complain and fucking yeah. Yeah. And That's and like, that, Can never like, catch a break Sort yeah. of people yeah, like at the end, It's like this thing called like lingers They just like yeah. they, 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 <laughs> they just hang around like, they're cool, like, cause It's like kind of like lingering yeah, So yeah. Uh, they just get like jaded and like just get stuck because when you get stuck in that hole they, they just get all depressed and they make everyone else feel bad and yeah because like a lot of your time at the end like you're sitting around waiting for something to happen so that's what makes people jaded because there's always nothing to do but then once they get told to do something because they're used to sitting there doing nothing they don't want to do the job yeah and they, they, don't, they, they don't do their job properly like they just 
they bring the morale down in the group and it, it just flows. It's just toxic. It's just, it's just, yeah, it just toxic. People like, if people like their mate gets promoted, they'll start yeah. hating that person because, oh, why should I get promoted? Mate, you'll sit there doing nothing. You're like, a shit cunt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, unless you, like, you, you've got to pick and choose like you hang around with because you don't want to be the guy yeah. you knows a lazy person, jaded person, lings around. Nah. Um, they don't, because it's like you can, they don't want to go out the field because, oh, so I've got an injured foot or. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm having troubles at home, so they just try to do that. That's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, try and, avoid and, and, and the time. issue is, is that the people that are actually having those issues aren't generally the ones that are coming forward, but it's the ones that, you know, or honestly couldn't be asked to do it or or um, get to a point where they're just like, nah, look, I, I can't really be fucked to go out there and do that. So then they just, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll lean out what we, what we refer to and they'll go back and do the thing. But the people that generally have an issue are generally the ones that need to um, end up relying on their mates out field yeah. to do it. And that's why, you know, I, I'm a massive, massive um, supporter of, you know, looking after your mates and, you know, men's mental health and, and, and just in general people's mental yeah. health. Yeah. Um, that it's it's an important thing, and especially in defence, and that's why you know, you know pub cats and, and stuff like that. You, you know, looking after your after your brothers and your sisters, and it's it's a massive thing, and it's the same thing um, in what we do as yeah. well. Does defence got such a high suicide rate? Like yeah. they're, they're having a big um, royal commission into it at the moment. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, but it's a, it's a pretty big um, issue within defence. So, so well, a lot, a lot of people some, you'll find are very passionate about. It, yeah. yeah. So what well, the the diggers and like even everyone's like passionate about it. it's just up, up higher the actual um medics and stuff that like take care of us that they're just they're not doing their job i suppose yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but it's, it is hard to diagnose but it's just that's what i mean like they need to sort their shit out and actually yeah. come forward and be like look i'm struggling i need a fucking i need help before they can fucking actually do anything and that's why a lot of the blokes that do end up killing themselves are usually the ones that no one expects yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're just like, oh shit never yeah that um that, thanks so much for coming in guys um <coughs> before we go i just gotta ask any life advice each of you or any advice for anyone trying to get into the army join the army yeah um yeah i definitely yeah on that like yeah join it if it's if it's right for you but definitely um consider your options and consider like what you what you like as a person and um dfr will will um definitely try and bring you on board and they'll they'll feed you like any other recruitment agency if they were doing their job right will will sell you the good stuff yeah. but um you just need to understand ask plenty of questions and then if it ticks all your boxes then then go for it but you know it's not going to be an easy thing um and you know we're both still in training so we haven't even seen um you know almost the beginning of it yet so um it's it's crazy so yeah to toss up your options but yeah if um you like have a good time and you like um Chilling with some really good people, then um, yeah, maybe it is for you. Cool. Yeah. Don't join Navy. Yeah. <laughs> Curtis, Mitch, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Treno, yeah. I'll see you. Thanks, mate. Fucking every day of my life. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, guys. guys. Oh, Cheers. Thank you, guys.